I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. And we're back for another edition of Heavy Muscle Radio on this January 28th, 2024 evening. Of course, I am here with the technician, Chris Aceto. And uh, Chris, uh, we got, uh, actually, it's the last weekend in, in January already. And I'm wondering where the whole month of January went. But um, I'm in down in sunny Florida, so I guess you probably had it a little rougher up there in uh, Maine. We're supposed to get three to six inches of well, it. Well, now. I heard, I heard. I heard a rumor that there, the uh, governor of Texas, uh, has decided that he's bringing in the biggest bodybuilders in the industry, and they're going to line them up along the border, the southern border between Mexico and Texas, and then, and they figure no, no, uh, no one's going to get through there. They're going to put Big Rammy down there. They're going to put Nick Walker next to him. And uh, Rubio Mascara next to him, and they're gonna see if they can get Hottie Shupin to come into the country, and they're gonna block the whole southern border there with all the bodies. Well, they're, 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 they're not even slipping through; they're just walking right through. We have there's I saw in the news today, uh, Denver, which has a population of seven hundred thousand, has they're ho hosting quote hosting forty thousand people who came across the border. Really? Wow! And as you know, New York City, your your former stomping ground which is like mm. insane yeah how come i how come we know how many live viewers are we not live i thought we were live maybe we didn't maybe didn't hit the live button it says we're live maybe I, the, I don't see the comments for some reason oh great maybe we're live <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any. It's, it's impossible that we don't have one comment. Sid, if you if you hear us, show me a comment. <laughs> Hold on, Xavier's texting me. Uh, Sid said we're live. It says, hey, Dave, it says you have the content marked for kids, which I don't think would make you ready. <laughs> there you go. Ah! First of all, I, but I don't understand why we're not, um, why I don't see the comments. Oh, yeah, it says made for the kids. That's kind of weird. All right, let me, let me edit that. That's keep, why you keep talking about <laughs> what happened set for kids. I must have the wrong. Maybe, maybe the maybe your computer's bugged, Dave, and your phone is uh, bugged, Dave. Uh, you have yeah. a technical. Yeah. All right. Let me see if that fixed it. I don't know why we don't have any. I've never seen this where we don't have uh, comments. Um, some something something something's not right. All right. Keep. I talked to. Um, I'll try to talk, and maybe you can talk to this. So, did you watch the Shark Tank with the Jay? I I didn't I didn't catch it because my I had uh, I had basketball with my ten year old. Not me playing basketball, but I just drive him to basketball. I don't play basketball, and I don't exercise, and I'm proud about it. But I did buy the only supplement you recommended, Dave, outside of species. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. I told Chris. I said I want it on my desk. Tell him what it is. I haven't opened it yet. Let me it grab it. It wasn't mine. If it would have been one of mine, it's I would have vitamin K and and it's called let's see vitamin K and vitamin D. I think. Right, right. And Dave yeah, said you, you need that, and I said Dave, I get all the vitamin D I need on <laughs> Sunday nights at nine o'clock when I this little ring light puts out lots of vitamin D and it gives me a like, this is skin cancer. Who doesn't go in the sun has no vitamin D in his body. I can guarantee it. So I got Chris on vitamin D and then K K two specifically will direct the vitamin D into your uh, bones and away from the blood vessels. We don't want to put calcium in your blood vessels. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a director. It's a, it's I do. Oh, by the way, I do see, um, I do see the um, comments now. So we're back. Oh, relieved. Yeah. You know, I, I've noticed that the more I'm using my reading glasses now, Chris, the less I can see close. Of course. When I wasn't using them and I was just straining, yeah, you could still, yeah, you could still I see saw it. perfectly. I mean, I wasn't perfect; it was it was annoying. But now that I put them on, so I can see things, I'm like, oh, it looks so great. It, now it, when I, take it, off, it, I can't see anything close. You know, it, it's like once you start using a pre-workout, you can never train without one. 
It's true. <laughs> Who should we apologize to tonight? Comments below. <laughs> Sid, you're, you're the best, Sid. You're really the best. So anyway, I watched – I didn't really watch Shark Tank. For some reason, my um, – my app won't let me watch it live. So, but I had a, one of my clients, actually one Tape of my it. friends, he was videotaping clips and just and just texting them to me, and I watched it that way. So I actually did see the whole thing. And number one, it, it did not surprise me one bit that Jay didn't take the deal. You know, they, Jay was off. Jay wanted fifty thousand dollar investment for his Jay's pet butter, uh, which is like a peanut butter based product. For dogs with other with some other vitamins and stuff, essential fatty acids. And I thought it was since I have peanut allergies and, and so so, and he, he was going to give ten percent ownership of the company to if they put up the ten uh, the fifty grand, and no one wanted. You know, they all had like Mark Cuban didn't. It was like oh, you know, it's, I'm not going to make my money back fast enough. And Lori, the, the home shopping queen, there she was like oh. I, I don't really eat peanuts. You know, they don't agree with me. So I can't really get behind the product. But meanwhile, the product is not for humans. It's it's for freaking dogs. She wouldn't be eating the product. So I don't even know what she was talking about. You would think on Home Shopping Network, they sell a lot of stuff. For, for, I'm for sure. Pets. I'm sure. I'm, Dave, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. Guarantee Jay's like when she said that. I didn't see the show. If she said that, I don't like what that she personally doesn't like peanuts. that so she can't eat peanut butter. Yeah, she's like, yeah, it doesn't agree with me or something like I that. I yeah. can hear the sarcasm in his head like, oh, my God. <laughs> that ridiculously successful product. I just know if Jay puts any mental effort into it, it's going to be a home run. The problem is, you know what? That's the problem, Chris. I, and I think this is really the reason why the, the Sharks didn't invest. Because they know that Jay is spread thin. He's got his own supplement company. They were talking about that. These guys like desperate people who this is their only – it's like they're rolling the dice. This is the, all they, they care about in their whole life. It's their passion. It's a matter of fact, it's the only way they can make money. They're destitute otherwise. They need this money terribly bad to make the product work. Those are the people they like to invest in. They, they're probably worried that Jay is, is going to give none of his attention to this product. They don't know Jay, obviously. <laughs> and, and that it, you know it's going to fall by the wayside because it's not going to be that important for him. So – and that they're going to wind up having to do all the work, you know, making the connections and stuff like that. And I guarantee <laughs> that's why they weren't so eager to get involved. I, that's well, some, what I people can, some people can chew gum and, and you know, walk at the same time. You they don't know Jay's they don't know Jay's work ethic. That's the problem, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so, but I thought Jay look, it, it didn't surprise me. Tell the story about when 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 because you were working with Jay obviously back in 1995. Yeah, Jay was. Jay's first, you know, soiree into the Shark Tank was when Joe Weider was auditioning for Jay. When when Joe was saying like, <laughs> you know, I can get be I can get behind you. I, what, I can, what had Jay won at that point? Had, what? What, show, what show had Jay won at that point? It was like one Jay show. Jay won the the show out in California. There was a really big amateur show. I forget the name of it. It was 1995. He won it. Um, it was a big, huge show out there for amateurs. Right, and he won that, and he went to Joe's office, and Joe Joe gave him the pitch, and you know, obviously, uh, you know, supplements, Flex Magazine, California, move out here, mm -hmm. uh, muscle, muscle and Fitness, put you on the cover, you know, and give you a contract. And Jay listened like a shark and said, "Nah, I'm gonna pass." He was like, "Glory." <laughs> Do you know how much he was offered? Um, I think it was a hundred or seventy seventy five a year. <laughs> And, then, and he wasn't making money then, you know. No, one of the other sharks called me like a couple weeks later. Tell him who called you. Peter McGuff called me and he said, yeah. Chris, did you know that? Did you know that Jay turned Joe Weider down? He said, I don't even think Arnold and Fr uh, Franco and Lou Frigno turned down. <laughs> so Jay said, no, thanks. But that, why? Because he felt that he can get more if he turned pro first? I, um, I, you know, I, I, I think that the 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 real reason was that I think he wanted to I think that he wanted to, you know, establish himself as a winner first and there might be some implied like leverage or bias or something that Joe may have had, even though Dillette I think that Dillette had was had a contract with Joe. Right. Right. Uh, before he turned pro, yeah. Yeah, I think they pro. wanted more money. I think I think and he held pro. out. He he, he did because didn't he sign with Weeder eventually? Well, I, I think Jay wanted like Mr. Wonderful one dollar for every single 
<laughs> for every every dynamic yeah, muscle builder he saw yeah. in perpetuity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Joe turned that down. That's right. That's right. Oh, he was smart. He was smart. So uh, you know, Jay, Jay's no stranger to negotiating. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I if told you, Jay, if you rewind, if you go back to the show, you know, I I've, I said that last week is. I mean, I, I, I was kidding with you maybe six months ago. I, I said Mark Cuban was leaving the show and Jay was going to be the shark because I think he's great. He'd be great on that show, right? Yeah, he'd be great. People would love to listen to his thought process. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he would, I wonder if he would, uh, uh, you know, invest in anyone, so, you know. Mm. They, don't they use their own money, those guys? Yeah, they use their own money, but I think, um, yeah, they use their own money. It's their money. You know, some of those deals don't, don't go down. You know, they make the deal on TV, but when they, you know, they oh. find that somebody's only selling, said they sold a million dollars worth of product, and they sold like 10 cents. Right, 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 right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, know, yeah. You know, The lawyers come in, Dave, after the show. Yeah, and then that's when the real deal happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The real deal happens after when the lawyers come. That, that's who was the, who were the shark tape? So it was Cuban. It was Cuban, Lori. It was Damon, and there was a, I think there was a, a new guy. Okay. I, that I didn't know. I I haven't really watched the show in the, like the last year or so. So there was a, there's, I think they have a new guy now that um, I didn't really recognize, but I thought it was good. I thought I, I enjoyed. It. I, I enjoy seeing people that I know in this. You know, it was really good when they were on that show. Kuklo was really good. But even better than him was Stan Efforting. Stan Efforting, I thought, was yeah, stellar. Because Stan. Stan lifted. He he did all those. Remember, he did all those power lifts and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, his product wasn't the greatest product, the cooler one. But but the but but the whatever performance he put on, he must have practiced it six million times. Did he was did great. he get it though? He did. He, I think he did get someone investing in him. I don't know what you know. I don't know if his actually went anywhere after that, but. Uh, I, and I know Kuklo got them. They got money too. And he was with his ex, you know, they, uh, they got some investment and I think they made some contacts. Uh, I think Damon invested them in, in them mm -hmm. on that time. He's, he's the bodybuilding fan. That's why, you know, I would have thought Damon would have invested in Jay, but maybe, maybe if it was a bodybuilding product, he would have, you know? Yeah. You know, I don't think you can go wrong with pet products. Neither do I. I really don't. It's um, the only thing about the peanut butter is it's it's a little messy. I think you know you were making a joke before. It I think it would almost be better if it's in like little like micro dosed like pods. I know you said it as a joke, but but I think that would work nice. So you just kind of pop the thing open and you give it to the dog, and it's like individual servings, so that you don't. Otherwise, you got to stick a, you got to stick the the, the the spoon in there, and you got to like give it to the dog. And, uh, well, it could be those di like those dishwasher pods. Yeah, the, the whole thing exactly. Or like a like a Karen, you know, coffee pot. So then you could sell it to Lori and say, "Oh, yeah, the right babies <laughs> they have their mascara and your lipstick." Damon you said, <laughs> according, according to Sid, Damon said to Jay, "You're you're Jay Cutler. You're a legend." And asked him if his supplement company distribution uh, could apply to this product. Uh, so they were they already knew he had a supplement company and everything like that. I'm telling you. They didn't think that they didn't want to insult him because Jay's a, a, like a celebrity type of thing. But I'm telling you, they didn't like the fact that I guarantee that he wasn't 100 percent committed to this product. That, that's why did they ask him, are you 100 percent committed? They always say that to people. They're like, well, you know, I see that you're still working a full time job and you're doing this. How are you going to have time to do this business? They're like, well, you know, I still have to pay the bills. They're like, no, 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 no. This has got to be you got to be 100 percent dedicated to this product. They always say that on Shark Tank. Well, that's they don't you, like when people are hedging I mean, their bets. One, you know? one, they don't, they don't know Jay, so they, they're missing out. And two, I said that that mm. product will probably will yeah. be set here five years, and we'll say like you know it'll be everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know, anyways, you you know this is Jay's luck. Jay will do the did the episode of Shark Tank. They he turned down their offer, the the one offer that he had. Someone will probably call, contact him, and say, "I, I want to buy the pet butter thing." And Jay will sell it for like five million dollars. You know, yeah. no sales at all. He's got seventy nine thousand dollars. So they'll just like the idea. That's 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 the kind of luck. Well, the pet market, Dave. This is a true story. The pet market. The pet yeah. market. I live at the time. I lived in well, Portland area, Portland, Maine. And right. someone. This is nineteen ninety five. Someone 
told me in Portland, you need to invest in IDEX. I talk about stocks every week. Mm. And what is IDEX? They said, they're a big company, they're growing. I said, what is it? They're here locally, next town over in Maine, next to Portland, Maine, in Westbrook, Maine, west of Portland. And I said, what is it? They said, they make diagnostic testing and medicine for dogs. Wow. I, and I thought, like, what a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> what are they worth now? Dave, if you, honestly, if you had, if you had invested probably like, I, I bet if you had invested a thousand when this guy told me, it's probably worth like two million. Wow. Wow. It is, it is like, it's always been for like the last 15 years of Wall Street Darwin. So, you know, the pet industry, you know, is just gigantic. It's, you know, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, because people are, I mean, people don't even have, every, who, who doesn't have a dog these days? You know, people, people grow up, their kids leave the house and they get a dog. Or they have kids and they say, let's, let's get the kids a dog. Or they're single and they say, I'm lonely, let's get a dog. You know, mm. or they just got a divorce. They said, you know what, I'm, let's, let's get a dog. Or someone died, let's get a dog. Everyone has a dog. Yeah. That's not, look, I, I, think, I think you can't go wrong with anything relating to pets. But I, I'm telling you, I, I used to watch Shark Tank religiously, and the, they like people who are super dedicated. Like, yeah, like they're, they're like, you know what they like, Dave? Is they're like, that's why. Oh, that was what I was thinking. You know, they, you know, uh, what's the chicken? Um, Chick Fil A. Yes. Chick Fil A. I think. I think I might be wrong. Um, I think that they have never had a franchise go out of business. Wow. That's pretty and, and then I'll, and then I don't put on Sundays. You you can you can get in, Dave. The, the 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 amount of money it takes to get in is like a joke. Nothing. You know, to open up a McDonald's costs insane amount of money. Or Burger King, yeah. franchisee. Chick Fil A is minuscule. I want to say like ten grand, maybe a hundred grand. It's minuscule, mm -hmm. but they want people. They want smart people. They want really bright people. Right. But they want you to do nothing, ever. In other words, you have to be all in for this as you can't be some like guy like, yeah, I have 30 McDonald's. I'm pretty good at it. Right. I have right, 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 right. And I have five hotels. So I really know business. They're like, no, you're not for us. We want the person. We because can get those, those are the people that are the most successful, people who are, who are all in on their on their businesses. By the way, my friend John Scuderi just told me that IDEX is in the industry standard testing for progesterone equipment for dog breeding. So I guess the dog breeders use this to test to see what the levels of progesterone are so they know when to breed the dogs. And uh, so, and they make progesterone testing machines as well. So you were right, Chris. That's yeah. They've, they've created, they've created many. The, I, I Dave, for every single person like me, who's like, yeah, there's another person who said, okay, here's a thousand dollars. Wow. Really? Okay. 20, that was 20, like 1995. Probably it was probably about the time Jay was turning down Joe Eater. <laughs> I think the, the stock was like a buck. Now it's like split adjusted. It's probably like five thousand or something. <laughs> Every dollar you put in, you get five thousand back. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Well, uh, Evan sent the Pony Taurus quad again. Did you? I did. I, I mean, I told you that, but um, maybe for people out there who haven't seen the video I did on it, uh, or I didn't do a video on it. Actually, this is the first I'm talking about. I did a video on Jay's butter. He was walking down. This is him after he tore the quad, but this was the staircase he was walking down. I called him up and we, we were texting back and forth. He said he was just walking down the stairs. He didn't slip, nothing. His quad just gave out. And it was the other quad. Because you remember two years ago, he tore his left quad and he tore his right quad just walking down the steps. He said it just popped. No, nothing was like acting weird. It wasn't hurting him or anything like that. And uh, he just had the surgery the other. I think he had it yesterday or the other day, so he's on the mend now. I got to tell you, it, you know, the the quad tear injury is the worst injury you could possibly get, and it's not because the surgery is bad. It's because the rehab is brutally painful because every millimeter of of motion you get back in that as you're bending it um, is like a ten out of ten pain. I, and you have to do it every day, and if you don't do it you'll never get the range of motion back. And then you, you see these guys at that. Like there was one guy I was talking to who tore his quad. I'm like, 
you have a good range of motion? He goes, yeah, pretty good. He can bend his knee to this. He can he can't bring his like his his foot back to his butt. Hey, it's so it's so funny you say that about the pain because once I I was at Springfield College and I was I forget what I had a my hip my hip and I went to like the physical therapy center for see if they could take care of my hip. Right. And there was a football player who was doing physical therapy, and he was screaming, Dave, honestly, like somebody had a knife to his aorta. Did he did he have a tear in the quad that he was fixing? Yeah, they, were, they, were, they were rehabbing him through a, a quad tear. Brutal. And you I know mean, me. I it, wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't like you know, I, I remember looking in and saw that like peek it in, see him sweating and screaming and his face yes. was so red, he was drenched. That's that's and, exactly how it feels. It's it's the most mind numbing pain. It's like you can't escape it. It's like it's like it, if they want to get anyone to talk and give information over to the other side, you know, like, like a, if you're a spy, yeah. all they got to do is do, if they can inflict that pain with like, a, with, with like an injection, you would tell everything. That's how painful it is. Would you rather be waterboarded or have a tech, uh, ch- <laughs> No, I'd rather be, I would rather be suffocated yeah, with waterboarding than, than, than that. That's how painful it is. That's why I was so impressed with the fact that when Branch tore his quad, he came back six months later and won the Arnold Classic. Not only did he get his range of motion back, he won the Arnold Classic. It's like it's like unbelievable uh, that, that that would be uh, – that he was able to do that. But, look, Evan did it once. He knows what he's got to go through. He's he's a tough guy, and, you know, he's one of these, you know, robot-like mentality like I am. He'll get through it. It's just – it sucks. So we'll, let's send our prayers out to him. We're going to send out the healing energy, his direction. He's a great guy, and, you know, hopefully he'll get through this – and uh, come out better on the other side. You know, the good thing is that he kind of was done competing anyway, I think. I don't think he was ever going to compete again. So if you're going to tear something, that, that's like what happened to me. Like, I tore my quad, but I wasn't, like, devastatedly depressed about it because I knew I wasn't competing anymore. If it had happened during my career, I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. You know, yeah. So it's, it's a little better when you're kind of past your, your years of competing. But, yeah, you know, who, who the heck wants to go through that at his age? But you know what? If you look at put it in perspective, you see we see these guys, people dying all the time. You know what? It's it's a setback, but you know nothing. It's not going to be a permanent disability for him, and he's gonna he'll come back just as good from it. And uh, you know his health is good, and that's what's most important. So now we did have a, unfortunately we had a death in the industry, and uh, Shelly Yakumchuk from. Uh, died. I don't know if you know who she is. I do not. I I was friends with her on Facebook. I didn't know her personally. I think I might. Well, I might have. I might have talked to her. You know, at a show or something like that. Let me just pull her page up here. Hold on. Evidently, she was battling Addison's disease, and I think she had breast cancer. There was a lot of things that were going wrong with her, and um, it's very sad. Pretty girl, you know. You never oh. want to see. You never oh. want to see. Anything bad like that happened to her? How old was she? I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know to be honest with you. I, I'm. No. Someone sent me the link, and I, uh, you know, I just wanted to share. I shared it on my Facebook because you know I thought it was relevant. And you know, anytime anyone in our industry who competes or who's a bodybuilder or you know works out, you know, goes down by the wayside. I don't care who they are. People contact me. I I give them the respect and you know the honor of them. Uh, for the hard work they put in and, you know, we send our prayers and uh, healing energy out to their family because it's a, it's a rough thing. And she obviously loved competing, you know, and, uh, you know, Addison's disease is, is a, is a interest. I, you know, John F. Kennedy had that. It's like an inability to produce. I was trying to figure out who had it. Yes. Yeah. JFK had it. You don't produce cortisol from your, um, your adrenal glands. And it, and, while and, it, it, it sounds like a bodybuilder's dream, right? Not to have any cortisol. Yeah. But cortisol is responsible for, you know, anti-inflammation. It raises blood sugar. If your blood sugar is low, you know, it causes gluconeogenesis. You you need to have, you know, cortisol. Uh, it also, you know, buffers the joints. That's why um, Kennedy always had pain in his back. And, you know, he had and when you have that, you kind of have to you have to take cortisol, you know, cortisone shots to kind of try to balance out what you're not producing. And it, it's it, there's a lot of wasting going on. So because the, the, the cortisol you take breaks down bone tissue, gives you osteoporosis. And I think that's what happened to Kennedy. I don't know what her situation was, but I, I, I think she died of like the cancer. I don't think the Addison's is what, what, what did her in, but um, you know, very sad story. So, um, you know, like I said, 
prayers out to the family and friends and fans and stuff like that. All right. What else is going on? So we talked about Jay. We talked about Evan. Oh, the Arnold Classic. I got a, um, I got a, uh, I think we have confirmation that Rubio Mosquera, next Zilla, is going to be in the show, Chris. What, what he was having a, pro, what, uh, a visa issue, right? Yeah. It sounds like from what, at least from what Sid told me that he heard that, that he's going to get that, he's going to get the visa. And that he's and he's going to do the show. Now, I didn't know if he was if he was just not interested in doing the show, and, and that you know he was going to pull like an Andrew Jack type of thing. Maybe he felt oh he, he overcommitted to it, but evidently he uh, he's doing it. So let me see. Hold on, Sid sending me a, an update here. Let's see what uh, <laughs> the latest and greatest is. Oh, uh, not they're not confirming. They're they're hopeful. It looks good though. All right, I don't want to give I don't want to give a definitive. I mean, it's gonna talk about nonsensical answer. Hopeful looks good. <laughs> I hate stuff like that. You're either well, you know, you're it is because then if we say he's coming and then he doesn't come, then it, then we 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 gave a, the, the wrong story. So I, we're we're trying to uh, we're trying to be uh, accurate on our. He wants to do the show. Let's put it that way. Cormier said that it looks very good that he's going to get it. I don't even know what. Why would he even have a problem getting a visa? Where, where is he coming from? Did, <sighs> what's his country of origin? I, I know that they were tra- the Christmas training. I thought he's from Colombia. I thought he's from Colombia. Oh, he's from Colombia. Is, Col- did, Col- I didn't Col- know. Col- Col- is there a game on tonight? Call Cormier and get him on. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows where he is? What country Chris could be in? You know. <laughs> Look, Rubio adds a level of, of excitement. I'm not saying, you know, I don't know if Rubio is as good as, as Andrew Jack, you know, and the fact that we lost him, but Rubio is definitely exciting, you know, and uh, and we don't know what we're going to get. We might get a really great version of him, and he could come in here and and and, and come in, you know, second place for all we know. He could win the show for all we know, mm-hmm. depending on, you know, how everyone else looks. So I think he's like a wild card factor, and that's going to make people interested in the show. I know it's going to make me more interested in the show, that's for sure. Well, he'll be there. He'll probably do the crowd favorite. I mean, we don't know if Hottie Shupin's going to make it. So, if it was like a, if it was yeah, a showdown, what, 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 what is the real rundown on on Hottie? I'm not. I don't know. I don't know if we have Ask an actor. He would know. What's what's the conjecture, Sid? What's Sid say? Get the desktop bodybuilding guy here. <laughs> yeah. We'll tell you. Yeah, Xavier. Yeah. What did Xavier? What does Xavier heard? Xavier Oaks. <laughs> Say it like it's factual enough. So, where'd you hear it from? Well, I heard it from someone. Yeah, else. he he is from Colombia, by the way, Rubio. So, um, it's looking good. I didn't know we had a problem with 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 reciprocation yeah. from from, from, from Colombia. I thought he, I thought that told me after uh, Pablo Escobar was was gotten rid of. I thought we were okay now with Colombia. Exactly. I thought I thought everything was. Uh, <laughs> I thought everything was copacetic now, right? <laughs> Unbelievable, right? All right. Talking about the Arnold Classic, obviously Samson Dowda has to be considered one of the, the favorites going into the show. If, if Hottie Schuppen shows up, obviously he's the favorite. We don't know if he's going to make it. Well, if you are a betting man, would you say that, that Hottie's going to make it? No. You don't think so? No, I don't think he's going to make it. Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that maybe he doesn't want to do it, or do you think it's just... No, I think he wants to do it. I just think okay. I, 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 I believe in political shenanigans more than anyone. Oh, look what Xavier's pulling. He's pulling like a, a he's pulling like the he's got the inside track. Don't pull that with me, Xavier. Yeah. He, he Xavier just me. started on someone's website. What'd he say? He said, I talked to Hani today. I can't disclose for a few days. <laughs> Xavier, you're not coming on anymore if you don't if you don't spill the beans. Get him on. Right? Get him on. I, we can tell just by truth. Watch. We'll, 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 yeah, we can we can interrogate him, you and I, and we can figure it like out. Shark reaction. It'll be like it'll be like, you know. <laughs> Bring one. You can, be, you can be Columbo, like the. Uh, yeah, let, 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 I'm going to send him the link. I'm sending you the links, Dave. Well, I can't say anything, Dave, because you have a terrible Australian accent. I know. I know. <laughs> I can't say anything because I talked to him. Come to find out, well, he talked to his cousin. <laughs> his cousin's training partner. <laughs> Oh my god. I love the Australians because they're always up when we do the show. Everyone in Australia wants to know if you're doing the show. Yeah. My sponsor. Click on that link. Get on the show right now. We're gonna Chris and I are interrogating you. I'm taking I'm 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 getting my hold on. I gotta get my executioner. Where's my executioner mask mask? 
<laughs> Xavier says I don't have a poker face. You know, you absolutely don't. You'll spill the beans. That's why. Much. That's why. That's why I said get him on the show. I need to see his face. <laughs> Whole point in me saying get him on the show. I'm gonna put on look two pairs of glasses just to. <laughs> Since like I'm gonna put this to Lori after Lori. Two sets of glasses. They're better than one. She said, I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't you got the Blackman glasses, though, Chris? Now. And what's the, what, what I want to know is what's the Dave, big secret? Dave, Dave, Dave right. maybe Blackman can go on and pitch the new MD. <laughs> Who would maybe you can get Damon to, to, to support him? I think print is back in, in style. Uh, <laughs> it's back in three countries. Don't give me any BS, Xavier. Get, click on the link and get on the on the show right now. You don't throw you can't throw comments out like that. Once you do that, you've committed. Okay. <laughs> Xavier's pulling a Ron Harris. <laughs> Forget it. Just block them, block them, block them. Pull Phil Heath and block them. Yeah, we're, we're not going to let you on. Never, I, never, I, never, I didn't know. notice. I didn't realize that the Arnold Classic has th three Arnolds right in a row. They got the Arnold uh, USA is March 1st to the 3rd. The Arnold UK is March 15th through the 17th. And then the Arnold South America is April 5th through the 7th. So they're all yeah. like the first three shows of the year. Yes. That's going to be exciting. Yeah. I'm glad they put them all together. If you were a competitor, wouldn't you do all three, Chris? I mean, unless you win. Um, if I was a competitor, I would think about doing all three. At least the, at least two of them. It depends on which competitor I was. Right. If, if I was a Rubio, I'd do all three. Yeah. Audi, you know, I'd just probably do the Arnold Ohio. If I was uh, Samson, um, I'd do one, but I'd, I'd bend to Milos demanding that I do three. Yeah, Milos will definitely make him do all three. <laughs> No doubt about it. I, I guarantee you Samson will be in all three probably. At least the first two for sure. He's already committed to the first two. I know that. So, How do you think Marcelo De Angelis is going to do? 4-7-D. Um, well, he was so impressive in his, you know, he looks so impressive in the pictures in the show that he did. And it was his first pro show. So I'd imagine – He's a big surprise simply because um, he matched up well at that show. And, you know, when you're doing your first pro show, no matter what you look like, you probably have this idea in the back of your head. You know, I know I look really, really good, but these guys are seasoned pros. You know, I just want to make X amount of placing. And then you're right in the mix, you know, and so... I think that builds your confidence. And I think when you have confidence with a physique like that, you can do a lot between the show that he did, uh, you know, Prague, whoever it was, and this right. show. So yeah. I think he's going to do, I think he can do well, really well. I, don't, I, I, I really don't know. I mean, he could do really well because he's he's got a lot of size. He's got a great B taper. He's got great quads, big arms, big, a lot yeah. of weight. You know, he um, he's impressive. He and, and he seems like one of these guys who's like who's improving at every show he does. Well, what show? He's only done one show. No, well, he you remember he was a wasn't he a men's physique? I mean, a classic physique guy before that? No, he was he was uh, he was classy. He couldn't make the weight class, wasn't he? And then no, he no, no, Dave, 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 he, he was he was was he a two twelve guy? No, he was an open guy. He won, I think, like the. I don't think I don't know what show he won the universe. No, or something. he couldn't make the weight. Remember, there was a it, whole controversy. You're not giving me a chance to. You, oh, you, okay, you go. Just like, you're just spitting out wrong information. All right, go. He was an open guy, and he decided to go into the classic division. And when he went, he couldn't make the weight, and okay. we had one of them on the show. Yeah, no, I remember the whole the whole. Remember those? I didn't know that he was an open guy, and then went backwards. I yeah. Thought. Yeah, so he was an open guy. Okay. He did the open division, then decided, you know, I'm going to give this classic a try. I got you. And look at him now. Then now he's like 90 pounds over classic weight. Yeah. So he yeah. could, you know, he could be really a, a big surprise, I think, because he's he's got width and, you know, width carries you and he's got quads. I mean, I mean that's not all he has either. He's no, I, I'm, I'm very impressed with his physique. I really like it. 
Now, I know he, he's better from the front and the sides than he is from the back, but he's got great conditioning from the back. Yeah, if, he, if he brings up, back, he only yeah, has he's, one weakness, his back double. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, I mean, his back last minute has a, a lot of, you know, yeah. width to it. Yeah. A really good V taper. I think he could be dangerous in this lineup. Yep. So, you know, especially if some of these guys don't show up. How do you think like a guy like this does in comparison to like a Rubio Mascara, who's like a, just a, a freak of, you know, mass? He doesn't have the structure of, of a of a horse MD, but he's got, you know, just that oogles of muscle. I mean, what do you think the judges go for? What do you think at this stage of their career would place better? Um, it all boils down to one thing. Who's in better condition? Because they both, they, 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 you, you can't, they're just totally different physiques. Um, and, uh, Rubio's huge. Uh, but Marcelo is, uh, he's not small by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, if you're judging the show, you're going to be, you know what, if you're judging the show, can, I can guarantee this. And you've never, as a judge, you've, even as a fan, Dave Palumbo, Chris Aceto has never seen either of them on stage in real life. So we don't know yeah. what they look like in person, but I, I can tell you that they're both going to be super impressive. And then you're going to, you know, as a judge, you're going to have to split hairs like, okay, who's better of the two? Yeah. It'll probably come down to be, you know, condition, I'm guessing, you know. I never. I don't think I've ever seen, uh, you know, at least in the, all his pictures he posts, Marcel has always seemed to be in really good shape. So yeah. I just think he's going to be a wild card in this lineup. And obviously, Rubio is going to be a wild card, even though we've seen him just recently. Yeah, I just, two wild you know, cards. You know, which makes the lineup exciting because, you know what, we don't usually have wild cards. We either have a, a weak lineup. Oh, look who showed up. Holy mackerel. Xavier Wills. <laughs> oh, definitely. definitely. Welcome, <laughs> Nervous Laugh. Hey, nervous Xavier laugh. Wills. Nervous Laugh. He's yeah, no, a little pot. He had a little nervous. He had to run back. Yeah, he's, he's 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 on delay because he had to smoke a little weed. To, he's no, stuttering no, a little bit. Yeah, I think he did. I, jump, I, no, I jumped on because uh, I saw the comments and they're <laughs> just savages. And as soon as I said it, I'm like, this you're going to make so much more of it than it actually is. <laughs> so I just knew I'd jump on and just does. Does Heidi have a visa? Um, I'm trying to think of what I can say. Um, nothing. It's, a, it's really yet, a yes no question, Xavier. Yeah, it's, yeah, but I can. If someone, Dave, you wouldn't reveal your source last week on the Heidi news. <laughs> what? So, you you're very I'm low. Here. You're speaking very low all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me turn the volume. Oh, it's a little way. I don't know. Okay. I'll try to talk louder. Right. Um, Come on. So he, so ha he either has a visa or Mr. Wonderful have and Laurie want to know. <laughs> it, it, the overall of it is basically that nothing's confirmed yet 100%, but they're hoping not to get him. So it, look, it looks good is what you're saying. I'm not sure. I don't know what to take from the message. I say that, that, means, that, that, that means you don't know. It seems like there's going to be some news in a couple of days' time. Basically. All of it means no, Dave. I told you. My guess. No, I'm going to tell you what no, happened. I never, I never said he was in. <laughs> no, this is what happened. Your First volume all, is terrible. Yeah, his volume is terrible. Is it, he sounds like he's in a tin can. Like, yeah, it sounds like you're in a Coke bottle. <laughs> <laughs> He's in. He's got tunnel vision, Chris. Let me let me jump back on. I'll get it. No, I mean you sound. I mean, look at you. Just seem a little. Maybe the microphone's not picking up. Maybe the, yeah. uh, the, the something else is picking up. Someone might be bugging your your, your microphone. Bro. Move on. <laughs> so this is what happened, Chris. I'll tell you what happened. He called Honey Honey up because he's trying to get a story, right, for his channel. Yeah. Well, let me let me let him log back in so he can hear me because this way I can I could you could tell you could read his face when I give the story yeah. that I think well, the, the, the face the, 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 I already read the he's, face. A, he's a nervous wreck already by yeah, the, way the face yeah. is he's full of crap he doesn't know anything <laughs> he's a nervous wreck because he knows if he tells us honey he doesn't, know, any, about he doesn't at him. know anything he knows nothing you don't think so no <laughs> what did he just say he just talked like like in a circle <laughs> <laughs> so, Janice Mago said, Xavier, apologize for wasting the chat's time. Oh, here's Lee Priest. <laughs> oh, no, where's Lee? What did Lee say? 
Get the settings right, Jesus. <laughs> I got a warning on TikTok saying how stupid it was. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? How long did it take him to, to log back in? I want to give you my scenario already. He's not showing up again. He's too nervous to come back. Yeah. I, I didn't think he was going to come on at all, to be honest with you. He was probably doing his hair or something like that and setting up his uh, background. Yeah, I got to, yeah, everyone's right. I should call my sister. My sister probably could, could do psychically read him. She did a psychic reading. I don't think, did I tell you she did a psychic reading on After Hours? No, who on, for who, for you? Oh, no, she, no, she, did, she can't read me. I'm her brother. She read uh, Romano. Yeah. She, she, Shelly Baby came through. And, and actually, she, more came through after the show, and, and John was freaking out about it. It was crazy. And she read uh, A Mean Son Who Died of Cancer. It was great. She did a, I mean, if you, if you believe all that stuff, I mean, she was nailing stuff that she couldn't know, that I, I didn't know. No yeah. one knew. It was crazy. So maybe, maybe she could read Xavier and see what he's, if he's telling the truth or not. Yeah, she, 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 she's brilliant. She called, Jay, she, she, she called Jay before Shark Tank and said, be careful, Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> Dollar bottle for life. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about my sister, my the psychic reading she did on the on after hours. Yeah, I saw the, that. I saw that. The, the comments were saying that we should get her on and she could read you and find out what you really, <laughs> you really know or don't know. <laughs> no, well, I, I really don't know anything, but he, he I, said to say, well, there you go. Okay. So. You cut call Ronnie Rambat up. Cut his mic, Dave. You don't know nothing. He just said, I right, told hold you. On, hold on. He, this is what he did. He called Hani Rambat up to get a, a story, okay, which is smart. You know, he's, he, he's way more industrious than I am because I'm too lazy to do all that stuff. And, you know, Hani, like, Hani's a good, good rapper. I mean, if you get him on the phone, he'll talk to you, you know. And, 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 and I know Xavier, he's probably playing coy and trying to see if Hani, Hani's going to give him any information, guaranteed. And, no, uh, no. I, I just, I just messaged him and straight up asked him. Oh, I said, you did? Oh, he, you did. Yeah, I said, I said, hey, hey, Honey, is um, it, do you know if is Hardy doing the the Arnold or not? Has he got his yeah. visa? And right, um, yeah, Honey's good. He, he took a few days to get back to me, but he's good because he always gets back to you. So, uh, what, so what he say? Always enjoy that. When you asked him that, oh, it, it just sounds like it's, it's basically they're working on it. And he, he did say one thing. He said, he said, right. people have no idea how much we go through every time to get Hardy back in. So it doesn't sound like it's an easy thing each time right, that he comes right. into the country. It's not like, oh, once you're in, you're good. Like it sounds difficult every time. So there's always a possibility maybe in the future that Hardy, you know, goes to come into the US via Olympia and is not allowed or whatever, especially like you guys have elections coming up and all that right. sort of stuff. So I mean, maybe this year's Olympia is in question. You don't really know. And it doesn't sound like it's a guarantee like we all think it right. is for the Olympia right. maybe every year. He didn't, he didn't say that, but that's just, he just said, people have no idea what we go through. It, it, it's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. All, what what, what Heidi really should do is he should just fly to Mexico and walk across the border in Texas. He won't have any problem getting it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's trying but seriously. The, why he's trying to do it the legal way? He should just do it the illegal mm. way. It's way easier, evidently. Mm. But it's it makes the Arnold lineup so in question because it's like right. is Rubio in or out? Is Hardy in or out? Because it, it's right. a bit. It's a very different show if you got both Hardy and Rubio in. Because then you got Rubio, sure. Samson, and then right. you got you know guys like James who's looking really good, James Hollingshead. But then if you take out Rubio and Hardy, it you know Samson most yeah. people assume he'll win and then it's sort of like a battle for second third fourth. i got news to you i think I, I think john della rhodes is going to shock a lot of people this guy he put a lot of mass on you know he's his last appearance if you remember last year he looked really good um, mm. i talked to john yesterday too, too funnily I'm enough sure but, you um, did. I, I, I'm, and um, i think he looks great yeah i actually forgot to get back to him for a few days and then um yeah he said i'm, I'm looking to basically it sounds like he's looking to shock everyone, and I think he's, he's going to be top confident. five. You mark my word; he'll be top five. I hope so. I think I he will. So. And you never know what's going to happen from Akeem Williams too. He's a wild card too. What yeah, do you think I saw about? He just posted a video today. He did. Yeah, he he's yeah. he's hit or miss. He's either all on in, and then he looks amazing, or he's a little off. What do you think about Rafa Brandeo? I know Chris, you're not working with him now. How is he going to look? You think? Um, should be you know improved. You know, I mean. You would, you know, he's improved basically every year, so it's a whole nother yeah. year. Plus, he took off. He took off a year, though, didn't he? An entire year, yeah. So yeah. it's a long time to take off. A lot of people don't have the balls to take off a year because, no. you know, it's a long time. It, it, it's, you know, 
to skip a year, you know, especially when you're a top 10 guy, right? to just say, I'm, 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 let me correct myself. It's not skipping a year because that sounds like you wasted a year. He took the year to, you know, make improvements to his physique and, right. you're gonna, you know, put, he's going to display him in, in Ohio. So it's, it's a, it's a, if people who show up, who are planning to show up, it's just a fantastic first, you know, call out of five or six people. What do you think, uh, Xavier? Do you think uh, we're going to see the best from we from um, Raphael, or do you think we're going to see like a so-so? Sometimes taking a year off can is not a good thing because you get a little rusty. Yeah, Dave. It's, it depends on the you know what I mean. That's it's yeah. He has a new coach. I think, it's tough too sometimes. Yeah. Well, he he's. I've seen some photos of him actually. I think Dave, if you wanted to find him of Rafa, and he's oh, yeah, this was I think of five weeks out or maybe a little under, and. Mm -hmm. The first photo I saw, I, I, are we four or five weeks out now? I'm trying to, five. I think a little bit lost on that. I think it's five weeks, right? <laughs> okay, five, so yeah, just five, under five. Five weeks a day if you're in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, his physique looks great. But I just had a question on conditioning. But I did think we were four weeks out, so I guess an extra week is, is all is you know he should be fine. I mean, I don't know, Chris, you'd have more of an idea if he gets in condition easy or if he's a you have to really push him down hard or not but if he comes in condition he's got probably my favorite physique in the ifb pro league now like in terms of i'm more into those aesthetic type of guys and he's got beautiful lines he's got a good amount of muscle too and some people say oh he's too small but i'm like i would rather that crazy shape where the waist goes in and he's got like the the pumped up bob paris look from the 90s so Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Rafa. I, I don't know if these um, if these pictures on his site are, are, are the most recent. It might not be on his YouTube. I know it's on all the Brazilian pages and stuff. Oh, it is. Um, very, yeah, I'm signed up to them now. Is that that like, can't be recent, can it? No, no that's old. That's like six years ago. Oh, so why doesn't he have? He's got one point. Oh wait, go, go down. Just the second row. Oh, oh, no, that's second, oh those were. Is that it? Is he is he at Flex's place, or no? I visit, I think it says Monster in the house. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks similar though. I thought the same thing, and that's why I said, oh no. He looks but, pretty yeah. big. He does, yeah. And I know what is it, Neil Hill working with him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's he's tagged in this. So. Look, I, I the guy's like one of the most aesthetic guys out there. So. Nine like how many ago. guys that have that have a chest like that, arms like that, all those yeah. body parts with such a small waist? Like, yeah, yeah and no, it's he, just it's just structured well as well. And round quads, it's like he definitely looks um, bigger here. But you know, when he sucks yeah. down and gets on stage, that'll be the the true test, you know, of, of how he looks. If only yeah. shows were judged from Instagram, Chris. Right? We'd have a lot of yeah. different yeah. champions out there. That's for sure. Yeah, right there in that shot. <laughs> Anyway, so who, who do you like in this lineup, Xavier? If you had, if you were a betting man, to win, are you all in or... with Samson? I mean, if Hardy's there, I, I probably have Hardy. Like it's, you know, it's one of those things where you don't really know how they're going to show up. So it's like, well, I'm fifty-two percent thinking Hardy will win, forty-eight percent Samson. I don't really know. It just depends what sort of package. Like, is Samson going to start to get burnt out a little bit? Does he not have that in him where he will get burnt out? Because I know Milos pushes him really right. hard in terms of a prep, like. He eats nothing for breakfast. Basically, it's just he has to kill himself. Oh, really? and he's still wow. not, still, yeah, he 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 really like kills Samson in terms of the prep. In terms of how much he eats, you would never think that he would probably eat that little. Now I don't know the exact amounts now, but at least when they were working together a year ago, he was yeah. killing Samson to get down. But he wasn't giving him tons and tons of cardio. So I did hear right. that on a podcast. Let me well, let me ask you this question, Chris, because this is this is probably what people really want to know. What does it take? In your mind, you've been doing this a very long time to beat Hottie Chupin. And we know Hottie's going to be at his best. He's always at his best. Even when he's a little off, he's still better than most people in terms of conditioning. What does it take? What is it going to take Samson to, to bring to the table to actually knock this guy off? Or, or is, is he unbeatable in this lineup? No, he's not unbeatable. Like if uh, you were strategizing, what do you think you have to do to beat this guy? I, uh, that, uh, in terms of Samson, you mean? Yeah, I mean, because he's the only guy who really can probably touch him, I would think. Samson needs to have 
uh, more polish. Um, he needs to be a little bit sharper everywhere. If he, you know, um, and, and 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 that's what he needs. I mean, he need he needs to be sharper everywhere. Um, and I think that if you remove that, Samson is far more effective versus Hardy one on one than he is with say throw Derek in the lineup. Because, right. You know, if you you can contrast, you know, those two, Hardy and Samson, and handicap their physiques far easier if there's two than three, because um, when there's three, all three have their attributes. So you know, you go like this: look, look, look. You know, that's why after prejudging, if you ask people, you know, you get three different opinions. Right. You know, but, uh, I mean, opinions of of three, obviously, because let's say calling three, three or four, but if it comes down to those two, the contrast, a market in terms of, you know, Hardy is phenomenal. Um, he's got impeccable condition, um, but you can't discount Samson's just overall bigness and size. I mean, it counts for something. So yeah, where, where, where he's falling a little bit short is condition. Um, and, you know, sometimes that is a, you know, uh, a genetic thing or just really hard. I mean, you just heard from, uh, Xavier that, you know, how hard he has to push just to, you know, come in in, in, in really good condition. What do you think that's caused by though? Why, why do you think he's having so much trouble getting his conditioning? You know, is it, is it, is well, it I mean, his condition and his, his condition has been pretty darn good, but, yeah. you know, I mean, just you, you, you were going against, um, you know what? You, you're going against when Cedric beat Hardy. And, you know, Cedric had a lot of criticism about his condition. Right. Cedric had one of the greatest sound bites ever. He said, <laughs> man, I just beat the most conditioned guy on the planet. <laughs> He's right. And he yeah. was right. Yeah. So, um, and, and that was one of, you know, uh, uh, one of Cedric's better conditions, you know, one of his better displays of conditions. So it's, you know, it's, it's not so much that, yes, he needs more polish. Yes, Samson needs to become, uh, he has to come in better condition than he was at the Olympia. But you are going up against somebody who, since the day he blew on to the bodybuilding stage, which was not when he technically yeah. beat Flex Lewis at the 212 Korea show. Right. Because talks about that and those pictures and they compared him and they're like, God, how did sure. this guy Flex Lewis? He yeah. actually won his pro card. This is another great story. He won his pro card in, I don't know, 2017 or so, whatever, 18, 17, 16. Right. And the big deal at the time, one of the big deals was Roly Winkler. And Roly right. was probably like 250, very hard. And Jose Raymond sent me pictures of Hadi standing next to him as a middleweight or like, you know, 180. Oh, was that at the Arnold Amateur? Yeah, whatever. He just won the pro. He just won. Oh. No, it was something in Europe. He just won his pro card. Oh, okay. okay. They let him do the pro show the next day. Gotcha. And uh, Jose sent the pictures of, of him next to uh, Roly and said, who would you have it as the winner? And I said, gosh, in some of these shots. He looks better, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the, this guy, who, who is it? He said, some some guy, you know, he's crazy. He just won the, whatever, amateur something. Yeah. And that was, so the point was, he'd been knocking off, or almost knocking off. He didn't win, um, Broly won, but he was almost good enough to knock him off when he was being outweighed by 50, 60 pounds, 60 right. pounds. Yeah. Well, he, he's he's hey, Dave, hard. I'm really put... sorry. I've got to head off. I've got to head off. Thank, thank, thank you for coming thanks on. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for that uh, no information, Xavier. It's incredible. Yeah. 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 It, it, it was, it was no info, know. but <laughs> we, we, enjoy, we enjoy your company anyway. So thanks for joining us. Yeah. All right. You enjoyed grilling me. So anyway, thank you guys. Yeah. Appreciate right. it. Later. Bye. His girlfriend just came over. She beat. Yeah. <laughs> something, something happened. Yeah. He, his, 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 his next meal, his, his alarm went off for his next meal. He doesn't want to miss it. So, but you know, 
what you're saying is 100 percent true. And the reason I'm asking you this is because, you know, when I interviewed Kevin Lavroni, you know, Kevin said to me he would eat vegetables and fish for every meal and no carbs, no fat, just vegetables and fish. And he would do two hours of cardio if he had to do that. that shredded look. And he was a genetic freak. So I'm wondering if, you know, if there, if maybe Samson's just not doing enough. I mean, Ronnie Coleman used to do two and a half hours of cardio. And, you know, Samson's got such great genetics. I don't think you could overtrain this guy. I think if the, he might need just to be, do more. I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm sure Milos has tried everything with him, but, you know, it just seems like something's not right that he can't get that dry, grainy look. Cause I don't know any athletes who haven't been able to achieve that if they, if they suffer enough. Um, is it that maybe he's getting, he's, shrinking down too much and maybe he's losing some of that wow factor when he does no, that not that he's shrinking no no, no. just get bigger if you look at he's, he's still getting bigger right no i'm saying do you think that maybe that's why they're not I'm making him suffer that much because it seems like if you suffer enough the fat has to burn away i mean at some point it's like well, you know at some, I'm so, at some point during the diet the body reaches a a, a breaking point where mm. you know if you just cannot get lean and you just starve right. it, that that saying the straw that broke the camel's back yeah it yeah. comes into play in bodybuilding too where you just like i've been doing you know i've been killing myself and i can't get leaner then all of a sudden you wake up and say god i lost four pounds it looks like i lost 40 and then you just you can't right. keep it can't you can't keep right. the weight on anymore right, 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 right. sometimes you know sometimes torture like that works and sometimes i think everybody um, needs to be tortured once to be able to get to that weird point where they say, God, Dave, that was the year you were right. You know, so-and-so that was the year you were just, you weren't the biggest, but you were so peeled. And then yeah. like after that, subsequent years after that, it, it seems like it, it comes a little bit easier. Mm. Yeah. I just think that we haven't seen, um, we haven't seen the best of him yet. And I think if when we do, I think he's going to be, crazy dangerous you know look we said it about ronnie coleman but i i mean we said it in that right we said it about big rammy i meant to say and it took him a long time and i don't know if he ever really peaked at, at his best you know so <laughs> who's gonna win mr olympia 2027 where'd that come from lee <laughs> are you are you doing it lee you entering i i would like to see um samson you know get to that point. You know what they should do? Me, me, since Milos is doing his diet and everything, that he ought to send Samson to fucking Dorian's place to train with Dorian. Let Dorian train him and keep no, an I mean, eye on him. At some point, you know, it's, it's the, you know, the diet can... <laughs> I think maybe, who knows? I don't know how. Maybe he needs to train more intensely or maybe maybe he's training too much. You know how sometimes... You know you, I mean, there, there's, a, there, there's, a, there's a thousand factors because... It, it could be you could be he could you could you could be over dieting you could be under dieting i'm, I'm saying maybe be, he's working out too much is what i'm saying maybe he needs to yeah i, I mean i'm not finished you could be oh, overtrained okay. yeah. you know what i mean there's you could be over overtrained and over dieted over trained and under dieted right. there's so many like little weird combos that you know get you to like 97 percent but not quite like zippered because you know what it is chris it's like how do you make the most efficient um, use of the time that you're in the gym? Because more is not better. If you're in the gym four or five hours a day, you definitely over, there's no way you're recovering from that. And that sometimes can make that your body look bad. So maybe it, it's more important to get into the gym, kind of do a briefer workout, kind of the way a la Dorian Yates, you know, more high intensity type training, um, you know, with fewer sets, but, you know, heavy weights, obviously, so you don't lose your muscle mass. And then really, you know, just focus on the diet and the cardio to get the fat off. I mean, because you can't do both. Like, you can't train for two hours with weights and then do two hours of cardio. It's, it, it, your body just gets too beat up from that, you know. So I'm wondering if maybe that's that might be uh, – because this guy's not losing any muscle. He's a genetic freak, you know. We can speculate all we want, obviously. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. It's speculation. And yeah. it, it's not that – it's, it's you know, the flip side of that is um, – there hasn't been a, 
you know, the, the flip side to that, or the, the fact is that if you look at Samson's progress over the last, whatever, the, the streak that he's on, three years, he's gone from somebody with good structure, really good structure, to bigger, 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 bigger. Right. And sometimes, like, it, you, what happens is when you add all that size, it takes time it, it takes time for it to um, simmer and, and get the condition because it's always in this upward projectile in terms of right. adding mass right. you know because we, we think of it the flip side is you say like oh this guy you know never really gains weight he gains three pounds and the next year he's only a pound bigger the next right. year he's two pounds right. and he's competing at the olympia but every year he's getting more refined right. right in other words he looks better he looks more 3d he looks more this so and so you know he looks more every single year you know there's more quality to him so yes he's not added a lot of size but you know this year's version would have beaten last year's and we right. thought he was last year which would have beaten the year before and we thought hey right. that's that's that year but when you're you know Com your weight is always going up because your real amount of muscle mass you're carrying is always going up. Right. It sounds easy, like from the peanut gallery, you just have to go no carbs and fish. Mm -hmm. But that's not how the body works. Not everyone's body, that's for sure. People, there's a lot of resistant physiques out there. When you cut them back too far, they stop losing. You're right. I mean, but what you're saying is he needs more muscle maturity. You think he needs more time to, for that muscle to become, you know, solidified, so to speak? I mean, that, that, that that might be it. I mean, that might be it. You know, because it just gains so much mass. I mean, it's hard to do do it all at one time. You know, if if you had looked back in three years ago and said, you know, the guy's going to be have gained whatever amount of muscle in three years, most people would say that's not going to happen. Yeah. By the way, Lee Priest wants to come over your house and organize your desk for you. He said it's very messy oh, in the back. Dude, you have no idea. I have two, I have two <laughs> hey, I, Lee, Lee, Lee is very OCD. He, he's, it's bothering him a lot, Chris. Lee, I have four desks. I have a computer desk with this giant that's in front of me. I have my other desk over here. I have this desk behind me, and then I have a desk down the hall that I stand up on. And well, people every single one of them is covered yeah. everywhere with papers. Because Chris, Chris still writes ma checks, paper checks, and, and mails them out with with stamps on. Dave, I have a meeting tomorrow at noon, <laughs> and some someone, honest to goodness, I have a meeting tomorrow at noon, <laughs> and that I'm I'm meeting with quote someone important, right? And he said, I I said we still meeting tomorrow because it's supposed to snow, you know, okay. and that that means for me it's going to be hard to you know get that. Uh, 30 year old Mercedes, you know, or, or, started or, up, yeah, because <laughs> it's a rear wheel drive, right? <laughs> That's right, you'll be spinning your wheels like, literally. So I, I was hoping, you know, I can't wait. I, you know, it's an important meeting, I want to go, and it's exciting. Right. And, um, he said, Yeah, I, I, I sent it to your Google, uh, oh no, calendar. <laughs> I said, Josh, you know, I use a page. That's why you like, you know, I write everything, I have a paper planner. <laughs> Chris has a Rolodex still, probably. Which... <laughs> there it is. Rolodex. You know, I told you whose number's in here, right? <laughs> Who's... They won't throw it away, Dave. How many people are still are, are not even alive in that Rolodex anymore? There are probably too many. Look at this one. Can you see Hold read on. that? Let me, let me zoom. Hold on. Now the light's catching it. We can't see it. You can't was, see it? No, it's the light is, is on. light. You, you're putting it right. Oh, there, hold on. Do it again. Hold it up again. Uh, tilt it a little bit. Tilt it forward. Joe, the weeder. Weeder Joe. Cell number 323-933-8182. Was that his cell phone or was that his yep. uh, line? Wow. That was his cell. That, that's so old, I can't throw it out. You got Arnold in there? No, but I got... You want want Jay to laugh? What? Hold on. You got Jay's home phone in there? No, from like when he's eighteen. Hold That's on. what I mean. Yeah, so we got another tip. <laughs> <laughs> Lee said, "Call, see if he answers." 
<laughs> maybe Betty, maybe Betty will answer. Oh no, this is Jay's uh this is Jay's first house in Vegas. I thought I had the the uh I thought I had I thought I had the house in it from from Worcester uh, Mass. Uh, that's funny. No. Well, Lee, who do you like in the uh, Arnold lineup? Who do you think is going to win? Sid, you should put up a poll. Put up a poll at the top, like f five guys we just talked about. See what see what everyone thinks. Who's going to win the Arnold Classic? Assuming that the people we talked about all will be there. Assuming Hottie will be there. <clears throat> you you can't give it. You can't hedge your bets. You got to pick one person. Well, that's the whole idea behind picking. Probably the safest bet would be to say Samson. He's the only one who's assuredly going to be there, probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think Nick foo-fooed us last week when we uh, we said that Nick was going to surprise everyone and show up. He he they mocked us by saying, "Oh, I already talked about it on our show with with you know the one he does with Guy Sisson, you know? I'm not doing it. No way. I I still think he should. I think he's crazy. From looking at his pictures on Instagram, I I think he's crazy not to do it. Especially given the fact that a lot of these guys might not make it. What if Hottie doesn't make it? Yeah. Nick can be Nick can be absolutely beat Samson Dowda, you know. He'd be crazy not to do it. No, Milos would say he doesn't check check all the boxes. <laughs> the, him, him and Milos and Samir Benu might have a, a, a cage match if, if 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 they get a rematch on that one. You gotta read Dave, you gotta create the reunion. You gotta the reunion show. <laughs> Milos, <laughs> Samir, Samir versus Milos. Yeah, at the at the, at the wrap up at the Arnold Classic. There, that's what we'll have. All right. It's all about quality, Dave. <laughs> oh my God, we're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of tips for Jason Blah Blah Blahoff. All right, I think we did enough. I think we entertained you guys enough. Are we entertaining enough for you today? I'm going to say that, you know what, I think that uh, – I hope I hope Hottie makes it. I really do because I like him, and I like to see the best competition on stage. I think I think he's going to have trouble getting that visa. But you know what, Xavier gave me the impression that I think we're going to see Hottie on the stage. I think it's going to be a two-man race between Hottie and Samson, like Lee Priest said. And I think that the uh, – I think that Samson's destiny really, really rests in his own hands. I think if he can bring – what we know he's capable of bringing. I think he can beat Hottie because he's got a better structure. He's bigger. He's wider. But if he doesn't bring that conditioning and Hottie shows up like he always does, I, I think it's lights out. You know, I think Hottie wins the show easy. I think that's really Samson is, can determine his own fate here. And you know what? That's a good, that's a, that's a good place to be in when you know that, you know what, if you bring your best, you could win, but if you don't, you're going to lose. You got no one to blame, but yourself at that point. Yeah. Who's so, uh, when are you headed out there, Dave? Uh, I, I haven't booked my flight yet, but probably Thursday. No. I would think. What do you? When are you coming in? Um, I would like to go early. You know, if uh, you know. Who are you working with? Ramon. Oh right. Okay. I forgot Ramon's doing the classic. Yeah. He should. Uh, is Ur Ur's doing it too? Right. No, ours is not doing it. Oh, so this should be a cakewalk for Ramon. Well, I don't think anything's a cakewalk. I don't. Well, care. nothing is assured. Obviously, anything can go wrong. If like, I don't, I don't want to jinx him or anything. Like that. I'm not going to. I him. tried to block your jinx right there. <laughs> but he, he, he happens to be the favorite for that, Chris. So you know. I don't believe in favorites. <laughs> Just like Cedric never believed in momentum, right? No, but he did beat the most conditioned guy on the planet. Lee said he'll be there Thursday, so we'll have to have a little. Uh, a little reunion on Thursday, all of us. We'll go have a, a drink at the bar, even though no one drinks. And we'll, uh, although Lee, you never know. Lee either doesn't drink or he'll drink a, a whole bottle of vodka. And that might be fun to get a whole bottle of vodka and Lee and then do a wrap up or do a predictions video, I should say. The whole team will be there. Lee, be ask Lee if you can go on Shark Tank with the new MD with Black Man. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, that's we're gonna pitch it. I want to bring you on Shark Tank, and we'll pitch the, the new MD 2.0. <laughs> I'm bringing you back, Lee. 
It's gonna right. be instead instead of Ron Harris writing fifty articles, we're gonna have AI write fifty articles. There you go. And it's a lot cheaper to have to, to have AI do it, right? Blackman will get caught. Someone, one of our uh, uh, one of our people in the comments there will will figure out that he used AI and they'll uh, they'll out him and he'll be forever you know banished from the, uh, the the publishing industry. All right, that's enough. We're getting too kooky here. Thank you guys for joining us. As always, put in the comments below who you think will win the Arnold Classic. And thank you, Xavier Wills, for joining us, even though you gave us absolutely no information. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And as we say every week here at Heavy Muscle Radio, with the Heavy Muscle hurts. Radio. The truth hurts. Sure does. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next week.